Guys, we are heading to the Koneka National Forest to test out the uh, pop-up utility trailer camper. Dude, the roof just flew off. Did we try to put it back on there? Oh, dude, you see that bass trying to hit it top water. All right, guys, we are packing up right now. We are loading up the brand new Guggen Squad giveaway truck, and we are attaching to it our brand new project, the utility trailer that we converted into a full-fledged pop-up camper. Here's the thing. We love the property out here. We love the backyard pond. We love the vibe that we got going on down here in Southern Alabama. But here's the thing. We need some fresh challenges. We need to take ourselves outside of our comfort zone, and the best way to do that, in my opinion, camping. So we are gathering all the supplies that we're gonna need for this adventure. We are about to get on the road, and two hours later, we're gonna be showing up at a beautiful National Wildlife Preserve, and we're gonna spend the next 24 hours exploring that area, fishing, doing some archery, exploring the whole nine yards. If you guys like this type of content, make sure you're smashing that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel with the bell notification enabled, because if you guys remember, this truck right here will be given away at the end of the year. Every $5 spent on GuggenSquad.com is one entry to win this truck. And if you wanna know what kind of stuff there is at GuggenSquad.com, you can either go visit it right now, or just stay tuned on this video. And it basically everything we're using down for the fishing rods, the lures, and the clothing, Everything is made by Guggen, so there's plenty of options. All right, boys, enough talk. Let's get on the road. Gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous. This is the first time we've ever taken the utility trailer camper project on the highway. Obviously, it rolls okay because we moved it during the video when we built it, but this is the first time ever on the highway. We've only gone 50 miles an hour with it so far, but to be fair, it's being held together by a couple ratchet straps. So I really hope it does not fall out on the highway. So guys, we are heading to the Koneka National Forest here in Southern Alabama. This is a huge place, all right? This is 83,000 plus acres of just wildlife. You know, you got timber, there's lakes and ponds, there's wildlife trails, there's all types of stuff to do. And there's a campground, obviously. This is one of the older wildlife areas in the state of Alabama. This thing was established back in 1936, and people have been going here and fishing and camping ever since. We thought this would be the perfect place to test out the uh, pop-up utility trailer camper. I mean, this is the perfect place to do it. Also got some other cool camping stuff we're gonna do once we get there. Definitely gonna be some fishing involved, hopefully a catch and cook tonight for supper. Plenty of exploring, and ultimately a nice, comfortable night's sleep under the stars. You'll kind of be under the stars. Kind of, a little bit. You'll be in the back of the truck, kind of underneath the stars. You guys will see. We got some great plans for this video. Stay tuned. Oh my God. Dude, the roof just flew off. Dude. I'm not kidding. Hopefully that didn't oh, hit nothing. That's what I'm saying. There's people pulled over, man. I really hope that didn't hit anybody. I think it's just the air mattress in the middle of the road. Oh my God, bro. How did we not hear that? Or like, I didn't hear anything, did you? No, I didn't. A truck's pulled over right there. Oh, I hope it didn't hit him. That ain't going back together. Oh my God, dude. How? How did that happen? It, like dead serious, how did this happen? Yeah, I don't know. It had to have just caught wind and just... Oh, well, they just drug it off right there. Well, that's good, good Samaritans dragging it off <laughs> they're looking back now they're like they're realizing where everything came from okay, okay i'm at a loss for word let's just go investigate this i looked back for a second and i realized oh my god there should definitely be a roof there and then that's where i noticed the air mattress come flying out and then i was really confused because i was like wait how did the air mattress fly out when there's a roof on everything else is fine the, the, the box itself is fine that's the good news no might be able to kind of salvage it. I know it sounds crazy, but look. The only thing that happened was like some of the, the screws, the metal screws came out right there and then the legs are gonna have to go down. Should we try to put it back on there? I've got enough, I mean, we could take one of these straps that's holding that in and strap it over the top. The only thing we can do. Yeah. Do a drill, man. Just because, here's the thing. It's fucked up, but it's still kind of together too. All right, so we realized very quickly that we were not gonna pick that thing up and put it back on there. I mean, it's a limp noodle now. It has the same weight of a normal roof, but it's just limp. So we had to go to the store and buy, we bought like a drill and some, uh, some more screws. We're gonna try to put this thing back together and get it back on top and maybe strap it down. Maybe a double strap, strap action this time. Sounds crazy, I know. We're gonna rebuild it.
<laughs> they had a jeep back there in the back. And, uh, Did somebody grab that one? Yeah, hold on. Hey guys! You alright? In case you guys were wondering what it looks like to have a strap hook come flying at you that I pulled myself. Yeah, didn't hit the old eyeball though. It's not a total loss. Gotta be honest, today is not going as I expected that it would. Andrew, we didn't make it very far, man. No, we did not. <laughs> it's about to be dark and we're right back where we started today. We decided after everything was said and done that we were gonna come back to my house and kind of uh, do a hard look at this thing and make sure uh, it's highway ready. And I'll be honest guys, I thought there was no chance that that roof could ever come off. That thing weighs hundreds of pounds. It takes multiple grown men to pick it up and put it on there. It's just one of them things and we had it strapped down. It oh yeah, by the way, injured. I am very injured here. Yeah, it looks nice, dude. It was a hard shot. Let's try this again in the morning. All right, folks, enough time has passed for us to kind of get our minds together here. The camper is a little beat up. She's got some things going on, but she's adequately strapped down now. That much is a fact. I just tried to remove the roof as hard as I could. I was unable to do so. Let's hope today went a little bit better than last time. Made it. We found a spot. We are here. Got to get legal first. We have to buy like a permit thing. We got to figure out kind of where we are. We drove past a beautiful lake on the way here. In fact, there was a bunch of campsites around the lake, but we kind of wanted to be by ourselves. We got some uh, some plans and things we want to do. We need a little bit of some space, you know. So first of all, we should probably set up camp, right? I mean, we yeah. got a good four hours before dark, but you never want to wait to the last minute to start camp because the weather could change on you, whatever, anything could happen. So obviously there's nothing to set up with the old camper. I mean, she's ready to go. In fact, the only thing I have to do to set up is just whoop, pull my little extension cord out of here and uh, plug her in. We only got two plugs, but by God, that's all we need. That's all we need. Should we uh, see if we got power? Let's go check her out. It falls apart when I let the strap go. Yeah, just, just... <laughs> Oh god. Oh yeah, it's on. The little the little light's on. And she's kicking on. Yeah, let's let the AC run a little bit, you know? We'll set up our beds and all that stuff later. It's actually gonna get down to like 57 degrees tonight, Andrew. So I don't think no we're gonna kidding. need AC. We're gonna need sleeping bags and potentially some man-on-man -man body heat. I can take care of that. Luckily, that's all the setting up that the camper needs, but your sleeping arrangements, my friend, got something very special for you Ooh. that I can't wait to see. I can't either. Let's set it up. All right, folks, we're gonna give you a detailed walkthrough of the campsite a little bit later when it gets close to dark, but I know you guys see that truck tent right there that Mr. Andrew is gonna be sleeping in. Maybe you might end up in the old hammock. Dude, I'm not gonna lie to you, just looking at this thing, it's probably the right decision, it's honestly. And with the weather, the weather's gonna be absolutely perfect tonight, like 58 degrees, maybe, which is not that cold. So if it gets too cold for him, though, he's got the, uh, truck tent. Now the camp is set up and we kind of have our sleeping situation situated. We need to do a little bit of exploring right now. You know, there's a lot of bodies of water out here. There's at least, I think, five that I saw on Google Earth when I was checking out this wildlife reserve. There's obviously the main one. I think they call that open pond. That's where most people do their fishing. That's probably where we'll start, but there's a bunch of little ponds around that we might be able to walk to. Maybe if we get lucky, we can catch a little bit of supper. Now you guys notice the uh, Gugan backpack? We rocking her. It's actually, it holds a ton. You know? It really does. It's and very functional, all the pockets and the way it's laid out. It's definitely a nice little fishing bag. One of the many examples, like I mentioned earlier in the video, every $5 spent on GuganSquad.com gets you an entry to win that truck. Well, this is one of the many items that can help you get those entries. I think it's actually on sale right now too. It's like $40 off the MSRP for some reason. So. Also the Guggen rods, all the rods are gonna be using on the website, T-shirt of the month club. Lots of ways to enter to win this truck, guys. The only reason I'm mentioning all this because I want you guys to know there's something on GuggenSquad.com for everybody. And I want one of you guys to win this truck. Dude, you're right. This campsite, this is like one of the nicest, like cleanest, well-kept 
campsites I've ever seen. Yes. yes. But so far, I am just amazed by the beauty and how the park's laid out, the functionality. The best, dude, if we can catch bass here, that's like the, the icing on top, the yeah. cherry on top. Oh, dude, there's wood right there. I see it. Let's see, what do we got? We got tied on. We've got a lunker log weightless. Wow, my rod is squigging. Got a little zinger, a little spinner bait right there. And then we've got on a finesse combo, I don't know why there's a trench hog on there, but we could probably put something like a rattling net or something if we need to. Well, I gotta throw the spinner bait first just for the simple fact that it's like windy and just gotta do it. Wonder what the lake record is here. <laughs> I don't know. I'd love to check, but we don't have service. Oh, wow. You see that? <laughs> I am on it. I'm just so excited to see water. I'm just like, oh, oh, I got a cast. Oh my gosh, yeah, a bunch of, dude, cast net. Frick, freak. I bought a cast net with Fishing with Norm the other day. I was in Walmart for one of his videos and I just completely misplaced the cast net. And I really wanted to bring one on this trip because I thought maybe there would be live bait near the shore or maybe even like a live brim or something that we could either use to fish with or cut it in half, try to catch a catfish. Of course, I don't have my cast net. And there's bait right there that can be cast netted. Oh. Dude, there's a lot of snaggy stuff out here, man. I think we'll have to switch to like a jig or something a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, geez, there it is. Is it just me or they just, they built this dock like two weeks ago. This thing looks it does look new. beautiful. Oh, dude, we're going to be able to see fish. If there's anything out here, look how clear the water is, man. Oh my gosh. I know you folks at home don't have polarized eyeballs. It's probably hard for you to see, but this water is just, you can see right through it. Let's see if we see anybody anywhere. Get off me, spider webs. Oh, they have a sunk structure. Really? Right That's probably what I was hung on. Oh man, so there's structure all over this dock. Wow. Let's see what else we got in here really need some weight to my rig here weightless would have been good but it ain't good anymore i put terminal in the front pouch because i knew i was going to have a hard time finding it oh, i love helping my future self out from time to time it's so cool a slim shade like a green pumpkin that's kind of my move if the water is like super clear i'm going straight to green pumpkin and i'm not going to look back all right that's gonna be a little bit better, I think. Now I can actually reach some of this stuff, I think. Because if I can get out there, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, and one of them's huge, different pieces of wood. So there's probably like 20 that we can't even see. I think if I can get a little slim shake and just bounce it around all innocently, she's gonna get shibalooshed eventually. Where at? Oh yeah, yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow dude i haven't seen fish blowing up on a public lake in a long time <laughs> it is beautiful just the fact that there's predatory fish out there doing predatory things that makes me happy one thing's for sure we got to walk down that way because we got all the structure like in the world down that bank so geez man how many down trees are there on that side of the lake it, it's all down trees way down. There's also a really cool cove back there with a bunch of standing timber in it. So I think this is just the beginning of the really bassy area. The fishing in today's video is sponsored by Deeper Smart Sonar. All right, guys, I got my deeper unit right here. This is the Chirp unit, Smart Sonar, tied up to a little muscle rod right here. We're gonna have to check some water depths here because I, don't, I have no idea what the fishing is like out here. Boom, and just like that, guys, we've got depth readings, we've got water temperature readings, and I think the map feature over here might be new, but I absolutely love showing exactly where we are, where we're fishing. We got some deep water out here, man. I had no idea it was that deep off this dock. It's showing 11 feet, and we're only like 10 feet off the dock. No way, dude, that's deep. Water temps is solid 82, that's about right. It's kind of what we've been seeing in the south recently, even though we've had some cooler weather. Oh, look, there's some of those other ponds that we went to a little bit later in this video. We do some exploring on the property and we do some fishing at this pond right here. 
That's pretty cool. Shows all the trails and everything. That's like a detailed map right there. That's really cool. Guys, the deeper smart sonar, they're so versatile. I mean, we're sitting here on a dock on a new lake, using it to establish those basic things we need to know as anglers. You can attach it to your kayak or boat with the little flex mount arm that they have. So versatile, love this product. They've been helping bank anglers out forever, Deeper has and it can help you step your fishing game up too. Guys, there'll be a link right in the top of the description if you wanna go check out Deeper. It's always cool to show support to the brands that support this channel and help pay for the content that you guys love. Now, back to today's video. Dude, look at this. That's about as much good cover and structure as you can have in one spot. Oh, that was a burp. Gross. Oh, oh tree limb. Whew. Oh! Dude, you see that bass trying to hit it top water. We're going back in on the edge of that grass line. Oh my God. Oh, dude, he got waked on so hard. Dude, I know you saw that. Oh, yeah. Freaking explosion. My phone's ringing because we finally have service. I can't answer it. Come on, bass. Dude, come on. Oh. Dude, that's a great sign though, yes, man. All right, well, I should I, I should do what I should have done right off the bat. When you miss the top water blow up, you're supposed to follow it up with like something slow, a worm, something, and just put it right where the, the blow up happened. So let's try that. Just, oh, that's not even anywhere near where it was. I'm all shook up. All right, here we go, it's kind of close. Oh, dude, something knocked slack in my line, but he wasn't there when I went to set the hook. Uh oh. There's so many things that feel like fish. Oh, oh, oh. He waked on me. He waked on me. Didn't eat though. I think I'm just gonna have to start working this thing top water. Or dude, just put a top water on. I think I have a buzz bait. I don't know if I have a braid combo, but at this point, dude, there he goes. Look. He just came out of the grass. He was in the grass. He just waked out of the grass. Oh my lord. Oh, there he goes again. Dude, he's followed my bait three different times. Oh my Dude, goodness. Wow. He keeps like coming in this clump of grass and like circling around and coming out. I know, I'm just gonna try to hit this area from some different angles and maybe can get him to commit. All right, we need a topwater lure. We need it stacked because we've got topwater action. Now I packed this bag the other day. I got everything in here. I've even got a scale in here. But did I pack a topwater lure? Got a blooper, not quite ideal, a little grassy. Filthy frog, better option. Don't have any braid, but that's still an option. I thought I put a freaking buzz bait in here, man. Honestly, if I didn't, I should be ashamed of myself. Dude, I would be ashamed of you. Yeah, I, I wouldn't blame you. you. Guys thought I was lying when I said this backpack was awesome. You can fill this thing. Oh, let's go. Nice. I put it in there. Now, fluoro combo, not ideal, but it will definitely work. A frog actually would be dope in this situation because it's a little slower, but as I said, no braid kind of puts a damper on that. Let's see how she looks. Oh, it's so weedless. Nine times out of 10, I swear to God. That's why I had so much confidence casting it over that thing. Dude, if we lose the buzz bait, you have to cut that out of the video. <laughs> I lost the buzz bait. Uh, I hate myself so much right now. That was like my third cast. Did you hear that? I just set the hook. Just I was kind of like hung on something, or I thought maybe like the fish kind of had it, and I swung. But it sounded like a missile coming back to us. We both went. Oh, oh dude, just smell that. Smell that campfire, bro. What are we doing fishing? We could be having a campfire right now. That's a very good point. Look, guys. Here's the thing. We can go fishing tonight. Or we could go fishing first thing in the morning, and we definitely will. But we're losing daylight. So I feel like it's best to head back to camp, get us a fire going, maybe show you guys what the actual campsite looks like and go from there. Oh God, for that. 
Look, look at how cool this is. It's pitch black dark. You know, we got a fire going. We're about to have a great evening camping. Check this out. Boom. Look at that, guys. Make sure you take your shoes off, of course, because we're not heathens in here. Just close the door. Oh, don't mind me, Andrew. Oh my gosh. Guys, you gotta, you gotta be honest, all right? Let's be fair for a second. This right here could be one of the best setups in the history of mankind and camping. Got the laptop, got the Wi-Fi hotspot, all running to actual power, if you guys remember. We are electrified in this piece. Got the AC going real, real low, you know, we don't need a lot of air. I mean, it's already like 60 something degrees. Feel is really nice, don't really need the air. Come on guys, we're living in a lap of luxury here. One might say we're glamping. Whoa, dear God, man. <laughs> I opened the door and there's a gosh darn forest fire situation going on here. Did you clear this with the park ranger over there? Of course, we got Andrew set up right here, the little tent. I'm not going to show you guys inside there because that's the man's private business, okay? I'm interested to see how the hammock does for you tonight. How do you combat bugs when you're sleeping under the stars like this? Dude. What's the strat? Uh, I just hope they don't mess with me. Oh, it's just you're just yeah. living on a, on a wing and a prayer. Yeah, pretty much. You're just hoping. Okay. Well, I like your strategy, man. At least you're up off the ground so the ground dwelling predators won't eat you. And it's comfortable too, man. I'm telling you. It actually, I mean, it looks. Looks pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. If I wasn't sleeping in there, I'd probably be a little jealous. It's a double nest. Before we go fishing, I wanna hear from you guys in the comments section. Give me your number one nighttime fishing lure to catch fish. I wanna hear from you guys. All right, folks, we got the fire raging. Once it burns down a little bit, we're gonna head off to a little bit of a nighttime jaunt, if you will. By the way, check out the truck lighting. We went ahead and took Andrew's tent off. It's over there. But yeah, check out the lighting system in this truck, by the way. It's kind of cool. I've always thought that like most pickup trucks should have at least a light or two within the bed, like recessed in here. This truck actually has that. Don't you think a little uh, nighttime topwater bite could be possible? Could be. So they like to do it. Ooh, but there's a braid combo though. That's interesting. Dude, where were you earlier? It's a muscle rod with braid, man. I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw a frog. Oh, it's a black frog too. It's a black popping frog. That's so perfect. This is coming together. I haven't gone night fishing in a long time. I'm just now realizing. And when I used to go night fishing, like a, a black top water was just like, it just slays, man. And it brings out the bigs too. Let's try to at least just put the flames down a little bit. Yay! Got the the filthy frog and I got a, a black blooper as a backup, which is a great backup. I just can't throw that in the grass, but Andrew, you feel pretty confident. We can just go walking through the woods and find our way back to our campsite. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm all about the adventure, man. That's for sure. I'm not afraid of a little adventure time. Where was the lake? This way? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? I think we'll get back. I mean, don't get me wrong. It just may take hours, that's all. Oh yeah. Oh my God, dude. Did you just hear that? Well, it's okay, but I mean, but did you hear it though? I, something, something big was like right there. We just walked up to the lake. This is gonna be an exciting night. Well, mm -hmm. something right there as we walked up. Something big swirled, kind of got spooked out of there, probably by us walking up. These bass seem strangely like aggressive yet timid. We've seen a lot of lot of action, but we haven't really gotten a lot of action. Maybe we're just due though. Oh god. He didn't get my frog. He didn't get my frog. <laughs> they're in that grass so that time like i was just trying to like reel it really fast so i could pull it through some grass and i like i think i just spooked him just like when i walked up on this one over here what the like i said these bass are acting weird man i almost just casted my frog spool completely off that would have been bad no more bomb cast for me oh what god what was that I don't think that was a bass. That was like a creature. Do you see it scooting across the water? 
Dude, I'm right on the tree. Oh my God, I just shook it. Every cast, it seems like there's movement either to the left of us or the right of us. A bass blowing up in the shallows all around us. It's a really eerie feeling because any cast could be that just crazy top water explosion that scares you, you know? Ooh, missed it. Come on, come back, buddy. Uh, you know, that was weird. Very weird. Like he swirled on it. I felt something hit the frog, but never really took it, I don't think. Dang. You heard that though, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. Because I felt it, you heard it. Yeah, that was a blow up on the froggy right there. A little bit of life. Hey, it's something. From the lake. We've just been wondering if we were going to see an alligator first before we see a largemouth bass, but I don't know. It's going to be close. Well, I don't know if I want to keep going, man. Got to be honest, it's like a bunch of trees right here, and it's, it looks like this is really grown up. Yeah. I don't know. Like, even over here, like all the woods right here look really grown up. So, I think it's probably best if we take this uh, explorer, exploratory mission back to the campsite where I believe there was a, a strange sighting, right, buddy? There was. All right, so here's our campsite. So, where'd you find them? Over here? They're right over here, yeah. Oh, geez. So, the, the adjoining campsite? The yeah, one on the other man. side of the street? Oh, dang. That's like a big, that's a big bone. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know what it was, but something. Had a really bad day right here. What do you think it was? Guess. Dude, that size? I mean, deer, maybe, I that's guess? What, yeah, maybe. Deer or hog? Yeah, yeah, true. It's not deer season right now, so I definitely can see hogs. I'm gonna say a mid to mid to large animal. I mean, it's kind of eerie that's right across the way from our camp, though. Well, I think we're gonna hit the hay here soon. I got my little setup in there, of course. We got a ton of stuff planned for tomorrow. Definitely gonna fish some more, and we're not going to leave this lake until we catch a bass. I'm saying that right now on the record. You guys can hold me to it. I also want to explore the property a little bit more because there are other ponds out here besides that big lake. For you archery fans out there, or like deer hunter fans, we're also gonna pull out some bows and shoot some arrows a little bit later. But yeah, I think it's time to retire. Don't you put this on YouTube, you dirty dogs. Let's do it. Whew. All right, folks, we are awake. Obviously, got the fire roaring right now. Get a little warmth. It's really not that cold right now. Really not. If we woke up, it was like 56 or 57 degrees. But Andrew said he was comfortable in the, uh, in the, uh, like a baby, dude. Yeah. In the, uh, God, why can't I say what you the were hammock. in? The hammock. Yeah, I gotta give it to you, man. The fact that you, uh, stayed in here last night was a uh, brave feat on your part. And you said you weren't even cold, right? Not even a little bit. That's crazy. I was definitely comfortable in here, obviously. Actually was running the AC at one point, so I had to turn it off. I slept like a baby. Now, we are gonna go fishing in just a little bit, like we said last night, but first, I wanna show you guys something. Ah, look at that beauty right there, folks. That is the new bow, and I gotta give a big shout out to my main man, Jordan Spencer, who is, uh, the man from Schnark TV and Common Man Outdoors, he hooked me up with this bow. It's a Martin Archery. I don't know anything about the model or anything like that because I have never bow hunted a day in my life, but I am willing to learn. We got the little uh, bag set up here. Let's see how a rookie like myself can uh, do with a bow this nice. All right, so as far as body positioning, am I, am I good? I mean, you might have move your left foot backwards. All right, I'm gonna aim for the uh, yellow jacket's face. I like it. Elbow up. Yeah, pull up, pull right? over your chest. Oh, this is probably good practice, huh? Just holding yeah, this thing? Yeah, just holding it. Cause yeah, technically the position you're in right now is the position you should be in to fire the bow. We'll get it adjusted, but for today, I'm about to just sling one. Send it. Come on, level knob. I mean, oh, it's a little left, but I hit him in the butt. Hey. <laughs> I did hit him in the face. I hit him in the ass. First shot so. of the day, though, man. <laughs> I'll take it. Good itch. That might have been in the face hole right there. Yeah, Dude, like 
You made a nice adjustment on this thing because you that that pin that green must be 15 yards now. Yeah. Because I, that I put that on his face and that looks like that hit my guy right in the eyeball. Might be two in his face hole. It's a smooth bow, dude. Dude, it really. I mean, having never shot one before, Jesus, thing feels amazing. Shout out to Jordan again, man. This is this is too cool. I got two left. You think I can split one of my arrows like Robin Hood? Uh, well, you'll beat me to it. I've never done it. <laughs> I imagine that's a pretty it. rare thing. It is. I'm waiting for it. That pattern's decent, Groove, man. I mean, for a beginner, you know, I, one thing I know from military and like shooting rifles is if you don't have to be an amazing shot but if you're a if you're a consistent shot that makes you know that that's going to be helpful 100%. <laughs> you know what i mean if you miss little but you're always missing at the you know you're always within that same area it gives you a good chance to be successful all right last one. Oh, yes i'm really starting to get more comfortable with it dude i mean i'll take it so this one kind of got away from me a touch, because if this one had been closer, that would have been a pretty nasty group. Dude, I see you, man. You're, you're sandbagging on us over here. You got the, you got a freaking man's bow over here. You know. So what is this one? Uh, it's a PSE uh, X-Force. Yeah, man. Looks pretty freaking sick, man. I like your case, too. Like you got that. me beat. I'm just riding like a freaking bum in the back seat. Got to keep my girl protected. I hear that. A little off. Damn it. I freaking, I messed up. There we go. A little low, but we on the target. Dead deer. Damn, I was way off. I was aiming for that far right one. See, I think but my level got off on that one. That to me is the hardest part. Yeah, dude. Well, you get it right, and then you look back at your sight, and you look back up at your at your bubble, and you're like, damn it, they're like they're going from. You go from having one on to one off. That one, I'm not sure what happened with that one. Look, I'm a rookie. I'm okay with that. Hitting the bag at 25 plus yards, I'm okay with that. There's still some adjustments need to be made with this thing on my sight and my draw length, because it's not, this is customized for somebody else at the moment. Probably shouldn't even be practicing with it because of that, but just can't stop, it's so much fun. All right, folks, well, we could sit here and shoot that bow literally all day. I mean, that's some of the most fun you could actually have as a human being. But our mission from yesterday, catching a bass out of this lake is not over yet. And we got the lowdown from a older gentleman that was walking around this morning. He kind of told us where all the little ponds were around the property. So we kind of got an idea of where to attack from a fishing perspective today. So we're gonna start packing up, kind of breaking down camp a little bit, getting our fishing stuff ready. That big bass, it's coming. Dude, if we don't catch a fish with Andrew wearing these socks right here, what are we doing? We got to, dude. It's good luck. I think if you use code LOJO22 on the website, you actually save like 20% or something on your first order. So it's kind of a dope deal. <laughs> dude, it's almost white capping out here <laughs> on a tiny lake. Dude, the rubbers were a good call, by the way. Yep. That was the move. When we were walking around last night, guys, we noticed this whole bank where all of the tall grass is, it is squishy, like muddy. It's like you could sink down an inch and not even realize it. The old Guggen Squad duck, deck boots, rubbers, whatever you want to call them, perfect for this situation. I don't know how effective a Texas rig and a frog is going to be right now against this. Might not be the best scenario. Might have to put like a heavy jig on here or a moving bait of some kind, I don't know. I'm gonna throw the frog for a minute, even though I don't even have a ton of confidence in it right this second. All the top water activity we saw yesterday and last night. Oh, that's a tree. Dude, this wind, is, this is like a joke, man. Holy moly. Broke it off. That's actually kind of fine because as I just pointed out to uh, the audience, the frog is just not gonna be our friend right now anyways. I hate to say it, but I think with the wind out here on the main lake, we're gonna have to pack up camp, get in the truck, 
and try to find these other little hidden ponds around the property. And hopefully one of them will be protected enough with trees where it's not this windy. Cause I just don't know how we can fish this. If we had a boat, we can get out in it, maybe. That's okay, the exploring portion is not over yet. All right, folks, we just arrived at Buck Pond. This is one of those smaller ponds. Wow, that wind is ripping. This is one of the smaller ponds on the management area, but it is just juicy looking. And there's definitely alligators here because there's signs everywhere. All right. Yeah, this is like a running trail. Well, a running trail or a fisherman's trail, you know, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so this pond looks substantially grassier than the main one does, but it's just as clear. Kind of crazy how clear it is and how windy it is. Dude, I think we're gonna have to work our way back to the back of the pond where it's calm back there, you know? If we want any chance at catching some fish today, switch it up to a little bandito bug on the Texas rig. That way I can swim it a little bit too, which I'm probably gonna do some. All right. Every single spot looks so juicy, but we got to get out of this wind if we're going to have a chance. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, dude, exactly. It's exactly what I wanted this video to be about. It wasn't just about the fishing. It wasn't just about the camping or the shooting of the bow or whatever. It's about being outside. It's a, yeah, it's about nature. It's about actually being out here and doing the stuff yourself. What do we got here? Safety zone, no shooting within or into area behind the sign. Does that mean you can shoot over here? I guess so. Dear Lord. Okay, so this is Other Pond. Can't remember what this one was named. But as you guys can see, we are lily padded up. Well, folks, one thing I know about lily pads is you wanna have a topwater frog, but if you don't, a lunker log, weightless, or even on braid, can honestly do a lot of the same things that a topwater lure can do. I will gladly demonstrate here in a moment. <laughs> we just saw another top water blow up right here in front of us too. Cause I can take this lunker log and I can cast it out. And because it's weightless, it's gonna stay on top of the water. So I mean, you guys can see, I'm basically just working it, kind of walking it on top, like you would a frog or like you would a walking bait, but it's completely weedless. And I can pull it over all the pads and reach uh, like a little hole in the pads. I can just kill it and it just slowly sinks right there in that hole. A lot of times it'll just be a bass sitting there and uh, maybe not even looking to eat, but that lunker log just wobbles right down in front of his face. He can't help it. I'm just glad we're exploring like all the ponds. You know what I mean? Because now we're gonna kind of know, like there's a, there's a specific strategy for like this pond versus that other one we were just at, you know, with not a lot of bank access. This one has lily pads, bank access. The big pond, we probably need to put the boat in one day. <sighs> Last chance, man. Yeah. <laughs> Last chance. You gonna get it done? I, I don't know, man. My confidence is waning. This is the dock right here. This is the first dock that we saw on this lake when we first got here yesterday. And we noticed right away there was fish out, out there blowing up and there was a fish feeder on it. So I feel like it's the best chance we have to catch a fish before we leave today. I mean, they're kicking us out at 2 p.m. And it's like 12 now. So we have to make something happen. Got a deeper with me. Check some uh, water levels, some temperatures. And I got a bandito bug. If we can't get it done with those two things, I don't know what else to do other than leave and go home and let my wife talk me off the ledge. It does seem like there's a lot of structure in this lake. A lot. Oh, geez. I think there'd be a bass near all that bait, but I just don't see anything. To come back here like with the boat and hit this again, there's a boat ramp right over there. I think right 10,000 likes, folks. Hit us with that 10,000 like goal. It's a pretty moderate goal these days. I feel like you guys can really hit it if you liked this style of content. So if you want us to come back, hit us with that 10,000 likes. And uh, we kind of want to anyways. And if I can't catch a fish, which it looks like I won't be able to, that's just more of a reason to come back and get some redemption, you know? Ooh. Oh, dude, I had a bite. Ooh, my first bite in three days. Dear God, he pulled the hook out. I'm I'm not 100%, but I'm like 90, 90%. Fun fact too, I just felt my first bit of structure out there. Ooh, I'm snaggerooed. I found the structure, buddy. That last cast, you shouldn't have said it. Yeah, I freaked it all up. It was like, oh yeah? The universe, man. If you guys don't know, I'm a big universe guy. 
And sometimes it loves you, sometimes it hates you. Norm and AO make fun of me because I believe in the universe and karma and stuff. Oh, it, break? it broke, man. Yeah, that's the universe, man. Dude, that's the only thing that didn't go right on this whole trip. Everything was great. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in there. Just kidding. I suck. We don't belong here. I want more out of life. Alright, before we end this video, we gotta do two things. One, we gotta put the camper back up. Two, we gotta get neighbor Daryl's reaction because he hasn't seen the camper since our little incident earlier in this video. I'm just curious to see how he's gonna react. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like he's gonna be proud on, on one hand just because of how well something he built performed in that situation. I also wanna know if he's like super mad at us for wrecking it immediately. It could be one or the other, I don't know. I guess Daryl's napping, he's inside. I'm not gonna disturb him. The man works hard and he rests hard too. All in all though, we just sustained this little bit of damage right here and you know, we kind of lost some integrity. Obviously we didn't want to pop the top while we were camping because you know, we don't really know what kind of damage was done, but we're going to take a look at it with neighbor Daryl, maybe in a future video and uh, use it again or build a bigger one. We've been talking about that a lot lately too. So please let me know what you think in the comment section. We've been talking about maybe getting a big utility camper or a big utility trailer and converting it into a camper, kind of like we did with this, but obviously bigger and better. Remember guys, there's a light goal of 10,000 for us to go back to Koneka National Forest and do another camping trip, maybe some hunting later on in the season, fishing with the boat. Um, there's a lot of different things we could do there. It was a beautiful place. We did not get to explore it enough. So if that's something you guys are interested in, hit that thumbs up button. We really enjoyed making this video, guys. It was so much fun to go camping. It was really the first time we've been able to camp with good weather this year. It's not gonna be the last time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of a change up with the content. We weren't able to catch a bass today, but by God, we tried as hard as we possibly could. And I think you guys would agree, that's the realistic nature of fishing, is that sometimes you don't catch them. So I know you guys understand that. That's why I love you. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're out of here, folks. Ain't no worries, ain't no worries, don't you worry about a thing, don't you worry, cause it's long.